Kuzuzampo, welcome to Bhutan This Week, our weekly news magazine program with me, Sunam Pem. Our top stories this week. New Ambassador of India to Bhutan presents credentials to His Majesty the King. Finance Ministry suspends import of vehicles to retain depleting foreign currency reserves. And Passport Division issues travel document amid shortage of ordinary passport booklet. The new ambassador of India to Bhutan, Sudhakar Dalela, presented his credentials to His Majesty the King at the throne room of the Tashi Chazong on 20th August. He was appointed as the ambassador of India to Bhutan earlier this month. The new ambassador was escorted in a chibril ceremony to the Tashi Chazong. The ambassador, his wife Namrata Dalila, and the Indian delegation accompanying him received an audience with His Majesty the King and Her Majesty the Gilson following the credential ceremony. Prior to this appointment, he was the Deputy Chief of Mission at the Indian Embassy in Washington, USA. India established its first diplomatic office in Bhutan in 1968 which then became the Indian Embassy in Bhutan in 1978. Since the first mission was established, 18 ambassadors have served in Bhutan, furthering the long-standing relations of friendship and cooperation between the two countries. Isha Gelson, BBS News. His Majesty granted citizenship kidu to 329 family members of RBA and RBP personnel on Wednesday. The family members receiving kidu were the children and spouses of armed force personnel. His Majesty the King also granted an audience to the personnel and their families receiving Kidu at the Tendatha of the Tashi Chazung on 24th August. His Majesty reminded the beneficiaries of the Kidu of their foremost responsibilities as Bhutanese citizens to strengthen the fabric of nation as a united people and work towards all important goal of nation building for the benefit of future generations. His Majesty the King has granted citizenship to over 24,000 beneficiaries till date in an ongoing process of granting Kidu. His Majesty's Secretariat launched a specialized tailoring course for its support staff in the elementary service personnel, general support personnel and operational categories on 20th August. 70 people employed across various projects and agencies under His Majesty's Secretariat, who expressed an interest in learning tailoring, are participating in the five-month-long course. This is part of a series of trainings that HMS is planning to offer its employees as an opportunity for them to learn new income-generating skills. The initiative is in accordance with the Royal Command granted to the Civil Service earlier this month to explore suitable trainings for the support staff. During an audience to a group of heads of civil service agencies, His Majesty the King expressed concerns over the financial stability of civil servants in the ESP and GSP categories post-retirement. His Majesty commanded that agencies create opportunities for their employees to gain new skills which they may be able to use to generate income later in life. In line with this royal command, his Majesty's Secretariat piloted the tailoring program, which it was able to do in record time and with minimal expenses, using the resources from the whole project, which has conducted basic tailoring courses for wives of armed force personnel over the years as a royal project. His Majesty's Secretariat hopes that these trainings, which it intends to carry out with prudent budgeting to avoid outsized expenditure, will enable employees to become more resilient and encourage a culture of lifelong learning throughout the public service. Isha Gelson, BBS News. To save the country's plunging foreign currency reserves, the Finance Ministry has suspended the import of vehicles. The decision came into effect from 19th August. The suspension will be reviewed and amended in six months from now, depending on the situation of the foreign currency reserves. The announcement comes amid news of countries in the region facing severe economic crisis to some even imposing similar measures to retain 
declining foreign currency reserves. The suspension on import of vehicles is one of the government's solutions to reduce spending amid falling foreign currency reserves. The Prime Minister, during his recent tour in the East, said that the country's foreign currency reserves depleted to around 850 million US dollars from around 1.3 billion US dollars about two years ago. He said that will last only about 15 months if the country's economic situation doesn't improve. Article 14, Section 7 of the Constitution states that a minimum foreign currency reserve that is adequate to meet the cost of not less than one year's essential import must be maintained. This is a first step towards trying to control or to take measures for the moment. We are hoping that with this measure that it will make things better for us and we will not have to impose any further restrictions on import of any other goods since vehicle import is the top, one of the top 10 imports that we make into the country and the other imports uh, which are top uh, imports being essential like raw materials used by industries, we felt that vehicle was something which we thought would be uh, possible for us to impose the moratorium. As per the ministry's notification, the suspension however is exempted on three conditions, heavy earth moving machines, agriculture machinery and utility vehicles costing less than 1.5 million item or equivalent to USD 20,000, whichever is less, will be allowed. In addition, vehicles for the use and promotion of tourism shall be exempted from the moratorium. And fossil and electric taxis, which are due for replacement, will also be exempted. Vehicle bookings received after yesterday will also not be permitted. Vehicle dealers in the country said this move will affect them heavily. For STC Bill, import and sale of vehicle is the bread and butter of the company, which gives a huge chunk of, I mean, we say profit or revenue to the company. So this will definitely have a very huge impact on the company. And uh, unfortunately, all of the vehicles that we import and sell are actually falling above are above that twenty thousand dollar caps, but uh, we have uh, SCCBL over the few uh, last few years had diversified. It had gone into petroleum. We are also exporting boulder boulders to Bangladesh, although, although it's very negligible, and we are also into other businesses. So hopefully, we may be able to sustain through this uh, monitoring. Government could allow us to import all those vehicles which have been ordered by us. That means LC open with the bank. That means already uh, bank has uh, given the confirmation to our supplier that uh, so many vehicles will be allowed to import for us. If they allow all those, then our stock may go another two months. Bhutan imported over 8,600 vehicles last year. And this year, from January to June alone, the country imported more than 3,700 vehicles, including two villas and heavy machinery. Export of hydropower, metals and other mines and minerals, tourism and inflow of remittance are key sources of Bhutan's foreign currency exchanges. But the country could not receive the expected foreign currencies from these sources amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Something Dolker? BBS News. The Druk Thindral Sopa is officially a registered political party. The party received the certificate of registration from the Election Commission of Bhutan on Monday, taking the number of registered political parties in the country to five. The Druk Thindral Sopa is the first new political party in almost a decade to get a registration certificate from the ECB. The former North Thimpu Member of Parliament from Druk Fintam Sokpa, Kinga Tsring, is the president of the newly registered party. The president says their manifestos and ideologies are in line with His Majesty's address during last year's National Day. He also said the party will be a value-based political party in pursuit of the gross national happiness values. The feeling is both uh, overwhelming um, and, and uh, on behalf of all our uh, Tindril uh, family and members, um, a great sense of accomplishment, joy, uh, but at the same time, a big um, uh, worry and, and, and anxiety session, you know, because I think uh, this is a trust, uh, as ECB has always maintained the highest of the standards in 
um, verifying the documents. Uh, it has always been maintained that once the Tundral Sopa is approved, the charter and all the documentation belongs to the whole of the nation. Meanwhile, Chang Atsring from Timshing constituency in Tashigang is the vice president of the party. According to him, the party will seek guidance from the ECB officials on the familiarization tour of the country it wishes to embark on soon. The party, as of now, has confirmed about 30 candidates. There are 12 female candidates. Druk Tintal Sokpa submitted its application for registration to the ECB in May this year. Pimasaldan Singh, BBS News. This year's preliminary examination of the Bhutan Civil Service Examination recorded the highest pass percentage in the last five years. The PE results declared on Wednesday revealed a pass percentage of 65%, which is an increase of over 24% compared to the past four years. Comparing to the last year's performance, it is up by over 38 percentage point. According to the Royal Civil Service Commission, the improvement in performance this year is because lesser number of graduates appeared for the preliminary exam this time than the previous years. More than 2,500 graduates from more than 160 colleges and universities within the country and abroad set for the exam, which was held earlier this month. Of them, more than 1,600 candidates scored 50% and beyond, meaning they are now qualified to sit for the main examination this October. It is the RCAC's criterion that a graduate must score a minimum of 50% in the PE to sit for the main exam. In terms of individual scores, the highest percentage scored by a graduate is 87%, while the lowest is 12%. The preliminary exam includes four different sections, Dongka, English, Problem Solving and Data Interpretation, and each carries 25 marks. Of the four sections, graduates performed well in Dongka, followed by Data Interpretation, English and Problem Solving. The RCAC initially announced that more than 3,000 graduates have confirmed for this year's PE. However, over 400 were absent during the exam. The graduates will compete for about 600 vacancies in different categories of the civil service. Samton Dolker, BBS News. The Department of Public Health under the Health Ministry plans to conduct a nationwide assessment on the vitamin D deficiency in the first quarter of next year. This comes after its recent study revealed that a majority of the screened patients at the National Referral Hospital in Thimpu were suffering from vitamin D deficiency. Of more than 1,000 tested, over 700 patients were found to be vitamin D deficient. The study was done over the past two years by the Department of Public Health and the clinical experts of the National Referral Hospital. According to the health officials, this is perhaps the first reliable assessment on vitamin D at the hospital since the testing equipment arrived only two years ago. Many of them could have been patients uh, and then who had uh, limited exposure to sunlight, whose uh, dietary intake must have been very poor. So this could be one reason why uh, vitamin D status uh, um, was found to be quite uh, deficiency at the deficiency level. He said through the screenings, it was found that patients ranging from one-day-old newborns to 94 years old had vitamin D deficiency. The symptoms include fatigue, bone pain, muscle cramps, and mood swings like depression. Acute deficiency of vitamin D softens the bones and causes muscle weakness and bone fracture. It also causes permanent deformities in children affecting their growth. When our skin is exposed to sunlight, so uh, we have uh, the vitamin D precursor inside our, uh, underneath our skin. So this is how vitamin D is formed in our body. So if we have uh, 15 to 20 minutes of exposure uh, to sunlight uh, between 10 to 3 p.m., these are the best times of the day to expose ourselves to sunlight. Prolonged vitamin D deficiency can cause osteoporosis a disease which is common among the elderly people. This health condition weakens bones to the point where they break easily. 
The Department of Public Health said the study indicates them to investigate further about the vitamin D deficiency at the national level. The department added such nationally represented assessment will keep them on toes to come up with appropriate interventions to ensure Bhutanese population has enough vitamin D. Meanwhile, also to boost vitamin D, one should eat meat products such as sardines, tuna, salmon and egg yolks. Kya Zong Chodin, BBS News. The passport division in Thimpu has run out of the ordinary passport booklet due to an overwhelming number of applicants in the recent months. The office receives nearly 300 applicants every day. As a temporary measure, the office started issuing green travel document since the past two weeks. This is the scene at the passport division office this afternoon. It is past 1 p.m., lunch hour for the officials. But they are busy collecting applications. The office normally accepts applications between 9 and 12 p.m. and issues passports after 2 p.m. The office has issued a staggering 19,000 passports in the last six months. Before the pandemic, the highest number of passports the division issued in a year was 13,000. Due to the shortage of ordinary blue passport booklet, the office started issuing the green travel document. It is usually meant for those without a citizenship identity card. And in the last five days, the office has issued more than 8,000 travel documents. The good thing is this travel document, we have enough, enough uh, stock, which can easily last for another six to seven months. So we will be uh, issuing uh, this uh, travel document in lieu of ordinary passport uh, until we, uh, our uh, ordinary passport is, uh, stock of ordinary passport is replenished. Bhutan imports the ordinary passport booklet from Germany and the division says the new stocks will arrive in October. The green travel document is valid up to five years, whereas the ordinary passport is valid for 10 years. According to the division, increasing number of Bhutanese sitting for the IELTS exam is one of the main reasons for the sudden rise in the numbers. The office added the rumor that the government is restricting issuance of passport has also led to the increase in the number. As far as uh, we are concerned, there is no uh, directive from the government to stop issuance of passport. So if there is no uh, directive from the government, our job, the protocol department, is just to facilitate. And then since issuance of passport is a public service delivery, we have to extend and then uh, uh, respond to their uh, need. With the sudden rise in numbers and a shortage of manpower, it has become difficult to issue the passport on time. I was asked to come after seven days to get the passport, so I came today. I applied for the passport to pursue higher education in Australia. Last time when I came to submit my application for the passport, there were a lot of people. The office was crowded with applicants. I made a passport to apply for overseas employment opportunities. And with many opting for better opportunities overseas, the numbers are only expected to increase. Kya Zong Chodin, BBS News. It came as a shock when a group of Bhutanese travellers had their trip to Nepal cut short right after it started. Seven people were denied entry at the Three Bhuban International Airport in Nepal on Thursday and had to return on Thursday. They said they were refused visas since they were carrying travel documents instead of passports. And just as they left, they were back in Paro from their trip to Nepal. Some of them had gone for official purposes, while some were on business trips and some on vacation. Unlike in the past, when travellers could get visa on arrival at the airport, they said the seven of them were denied the service since they were carrying travel documents. And to make matters worse, they said those who had not purchased their written tickets had to pay for their flight back. One of the passengers said he incurred around 24,000 Yultram for the round trip. 
and I have the blue passport. My mother, she got uh, the green one, travel document, and I was taking her for a holiday. In the airport, they didn't allow us to, uh, they didn't give us a visa on arrival, that's it. And then we were deported back. Now I don't know how to go about, like, who should we blame? You know, the government, okay? Nobody told us, like, you know? Hmm. The official said the airport said our travel document is not accepted and that they cannot allow us to enter their country. They said this is according to their law. They refused to even look at the document, so we had to fly back. Our case may be a minor one, but I'm worried about those who are traveling to far off places. The foreign ministry has been issuing travel documents in place of passports after it ran out of passport booklets more than a week ago. While ordinary passports are blue in color with a validity of 10 years, travel documents are green with five-year validity. Meanwhile, the foreign minister said some countries such as Nepal require prior visa when entering with travel documents, meaning people need to process their visa in advance before traveling to the destination country. He said travelers need to cross-check the visa procedures in the destination countries before flying out. It is unclear whether the ministry notified the public on this information previously. With additional information from Namgewanchu, Kelsang Chodin, BBS News. An ordinary person would take 20 days to reach Bumthang from Gaza on foot, according to the Tourism Council of Bhutan. But 30 runners are looking forward to complete it in five days during the snowman race. The snowman race is a high-altitude ultra-marathon challenging the world's fittest and most elite runners to help raise awareness on the impacts of climate change. The pandemic delayed the race, which was supposed to happen in 2020. This is what the trail looks like from Gaza to Bumtang. Some of these areas lie more than 5,000 meters above sea level. The race will follow a 222-kilometer high-altitude trekking route called the Snowman Trek. According to the Secretariat, ordinary trekkers take up to 20 days to complete the trail. A real-time GPS live tracking system, an offline GPS app for the runners and route markers will enable the ultra runners to be on track and safe. The initial trial run was held in 2019. 22 international elite runners and 8 Bhutanese runners will look to conquer one of the world's most grueling paths on foot. We believe that uh, as far as preparation is concerned, by the athletes, it is on track and similarly on the logistic front also, we are very much on track la, with support from all the stakeholders. The race itself is just a message for this climate change, la, the creating awareness, advocacy on the need by the world uh, global community to take this seriously and do a remedial uh, measures. La. He added, the race will help boost tourism in the country. Since it is a global event, uh, naturally, when this race is being promoted, Bhutan will be promoted. So indirectly, this would definitely uh, help in promoting uh, tourism also. Basic amenities such as health facilities, emergency services, halting points, and a weather forecasting team will be readied for the race which begins on 13th October. Against the backdrop of staggering mountains and majestic glaciers, the race aspires to bring the world's attention to climate change and its impacts. Bring that to PBS News. That's all for this week. Thank you for joining us.